Hello everyone. In this presentation, we will study sustained release drug delivery system content. In this chapter, already four or five points we have discussed in classroom. Like, what do you mean by sustained release drug delivery system? What is the need of sustained release drug delivery system? Various concepts and difference between sustained release and controlled release drug delivery system, as well as what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages, and what are the ideal characteristics of a drug to be formulated as a sustained release drug delivery system. Now, remaining part that is, what are the methods of formulation of sustained release drug delivery system, and what are the evaluation parameter, and what is parental sustained release drug delivery system. These points we are going to study in this lecture. So, just a brief what we have studied already. That is factors to be considered uh, for a drug to be converted into a sustained release dose form. Among that, all these factors are divided into biological factors and physiological factors. In biological factors, as we know that absorption of drug should be fast, but it should not be too fast because it will increase the elimination rate. So that's why it should be optimum. The distribution of drug, it also should be optimum. Means the apparent volume of distribution should not be too high. If it is too high, then inherently our drug is sustained action. And if apparent volume of distribution is too small, then the excretion of drug will be very fast and its half-life will be very short. Similarly, metabolism also should be optimum and biological half-life of drug should be in between 2 to 5 hours. And margin of safety, it is also very important because one of the disadvantage of sustained release we have seen that is dose dumping. So that's why the therapeutic window of drug must be large enough to get a good margin of safety. Then in physiological factors, the dose size plays a very important role because we have to add other ingredients. So that's why dose of drug must be small. Then drug must have sufficiently good partition coefficient so that it will be absorbed by the passive diffusion. The molecular size of the drug should be small. The drug must have sufficient aqueous solubility and the drug must be stable throughout the length of GIT as well as protein binding of drug should not be too much extensive or it should not be too less because it also determines the half-life of drug as well as the drug must have sufficient pKa value also. Now, what are the polymers we are used, we are using in sustained release doses form? The various number of polymers we can use in sustained release doses form and there are number of ways to classify this polymer. So one of the way of classifying is according to their source. So according to source, polymer can be classified into natural polymers such as xanthan gum, polyurethanes, goar gum, karaya gum, acacia and so on. And second category is semi-synthetic polymer, means the natural polymers, they are slightly modified. So they can be called as a semi-synthetic polymers, such as various cellulose derivatives of uh, like HPMC, sodium CMC, ethyl cellulose and etc. And third category is synthetic polymers, such as polyesters, polyamides and polyolefins. Another way to classify the uh, polymer is according to their characteristics. So, polymer first category is insoluble and inert polymers. Means these are the polymers which are practically insoluble in water and they are inert. They do not deteriorate. For example, polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, methyl acrylates, methacrylates, copolymers and ethyl cellulose. Second category is insoluble but erodible polymers such as carnauba wax, stearic acid, castor wax and so on. And third category is hydrophilic polymers. So hydrophilic polymer doesn't mean that they are water soluble. Some may be water soluble, some may be water insoluble but hydrophilic in nature means they absorb the water. The examples are methyl cellulose, hydroxyethyl cellulose, HPMC, sodium CMC, sodium alginate 
etc. The next point is how what are the approaches of design of oral sustained release drug delivery system? Formulation methods used to obtain the desired drug availability rate from sustained action doses form includes increasing the particle size of drug, embedding the drug in polymer matrix or we can call it as entrapment of drug in polymer matrix, coating the drug and doses form containing drug, forming complex of drug with materials such as iron exchange resins. So first approach we will see that is increasing the particle size of the drug. The purpose of increasing particle size is to decrease the surface to volume ratio which slows down the rate of drug availability or drug bioavailability. This method is a single means for obtaining the desired drug availability rate and it is limited to only poorly water soluble drugs. Means those drugs which are having poor water solubility, they can only be converted into sustained release doses form by increasing their particle size, such as griseofulvin. Second approach is embedding or entrapping the drug in polymer matrix. Matrix may be defined as a uniform dispersion of drug in solid which is less soluble than a drug in the dispersion fluid and which form the continuous external phase of the dispersion and which effectively retard or slow down the passage of drug from the matrix to the dispersion flow. One of the least complicated or simplest approach uh, to the manufacture of sustained release doses form involves the direct compression of drug materials and additives means we have to mix drug and polymer and other additives and just directly compress into a tablet and these tablets have ability to retard or slow down the release of drug. Various polymers can be used to prepare the matrix systems. Again, various insoluble inert polymers such as polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, methyl acrylate can be used. Insoluble erodible polymers like carnauba wax, castor wax, stearic acid, they also can be used. Hydrophilic polymers also can be used. In a matrix system, the drug is dispersed as a solid particle within a porous matrix form of a water insoluble polymer such as PVC. Means through this water insoluble matrix, generally or most of the time, the drug get diffused. But when we are using insoluble erodible polymers, then the polymer form its surface of the doses form, say for example tablet. From the surface of this tablet, the polymers get eroded and ultimately the drug which is entrapped inside the polymer, it will release slowly. So this diagram representing the release pattern of drug from a uh, matrix system. Initially, the drug particle located at the surface of release unit will be dissolved and the drug release rapidly. So this rapid release of drug will help to achieve the therapeutic level or we can call it as a loading dose also. Thereafter, the drug particle at successively increasing distance from the surface of the release unit will be dissolved and released by diffusion in the pores to the exterior of the release unit. The main formulation factor by which the release rate from matrix system can be controlled are the amount of drug in the matrix, the porosity of, a, of the release unit and solubility of the drug. It is logically we can say that as we are increasing the amount of drug in the matrix, the release rate will be faster. And the porosity of drug uh, release unit that is polymer matrix, if the polymer is highly porous then definitely release rate will be faster and porosity is, is less then definitely the release will be slower. The solubility of drug also plays an important role because if drug is freely soluble in water then release rate will be definitely faster. Then types of matrix system. There are many types of matrix system but basically we will discuss two matrix system that are slow eroding matrix and inert plastic matrix. 
first slowly eroding matrix. It consists of materials and polymers granulated and both are mixed. Second type of matrix, it is embedding the drug in inert polymer plastic matrix. So the principle is the drug granulated with an inert insoluble polymer such as polyethylene, polyvinyl acetate, polystyrene, etc. The granulation is compressed uh, which result into a matrix system. Drug is slowly released from the inert plastic matrix by leaching into the body fluids. We must remember here that as we are using inert plastic matrix means these are the polymers which are insoluble as well as inert they do not dissolve. The shape of our doses form remains intact throughout the release period of doses form and generally through this system the release of drug is by diffusion mechanism. Then methods of preparation. We can prepare a uh, matrix system by using waxes or any other uh, granules also. So we can go for direct compression method also. We can go for granulation also and then these granules may be compressed into a tablet doses form. Third approach is coating the drug or doses form containing the drug or it can be also called as micro encapsulation. The method for retarding drug release from the doses form is to coat its surface with material or polymers that retard penetration by the dispersion fluid. Drug release depend on the physicochemical nature of coating material means how porous is the polymer and how soluble or how much insoluble it is in the water system. Microencapsulation is rapidly expands, expanding technique as a process. It is a means of applying relatively thin coating to small particles of the solid or droplets of liquid and dispersion. So this point microencapsulation we will separately study in detail in next chapter. The application of coating might uh, will include sustained release or prolonged action medication or test masking for converting a unpleasant test drug into a chewable tablet, powders and suspension and single layer tablets containing chemically incompatible ingredients. Also it can be used in new formulation concept for creams, ointments, aerosols and etc. The polymers for coating may be used like polyvinyl alcohol, polyacrylics, ethyl cellulose, polyethylene and so on. This ideal requirement is that the polymer must have ability to form the film. Fourth approach is chemically reacting the drug with materials such as ion exchange resins. Sustained delivery of ionizing acidic or basic drug can be obtained by complexing them with the insoluble non-toxin anion exchanger and cationic exchanger respectively. Means we know that most of the drugs are either weakly acidic or basic. So weakly acidic drug, we can form a complex with anionic exchanger and for weakly basic drug, we can form complex with the cationic exchanger. Here the drug is released slowly by diffusing through resin polymer. The complex can be prepared by incubating the drug resin solution or passing the drug solution through a column containing ion exchange resin. This is also called as loading of resin with drug. And these ion exchange resin have ability to exchange the drug molecules with the ions, whether they are cations or anions. Means when first of all we have to load drug to these ions. So example is cation exchange resin, cation exchange resin in which we can load the weekly basic drugs and in anion exchange resin we can load the weekly acidic drug and when these are administered this drug will be released into the body.